on September 1st, 2020. This is the meeting of the Stroud County Board of Supervisors originating from the administration building. Um, public access to the meeting is being provided via Zoom and that's consistent with um, uh, what we've been doing in terms of the COVID-19 pandemic for social distancing. Uh, that is allowed by 21.8.1 of the Code of Iowa. Um, I would ask anybody who would like to to join us in Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. I would entertain a motion for adoption of the agenda. So moved. Second. Pedens? Aye. Olson? Aye. Merck and I. Agenda's adopted. Next we'll have updates on COVID-19. Are there any updates from staff? That, um, okay. If not, supervisors, Supervisor Heddens, do you have numbers for the day? I do. It looks like statewide we have 684 new cases and nine deaths. Story County has 92 new cases, no additional deaths, and it looks like one hospitalized, at least one from Story County yeah. hospitalized. Thank you. Uh, now we'll um, have uh, public comment number one. This comment period is for the public to address topics on today's agenda. I'll open the public comment period. And if anybody um, from the public um, has a comment, would you please raise your hand if you're on Zoom via computer or unmute yourself? <clears throat> star six or star nine? Star nine. Seeing, see any raised hands? No, not. Okay, seeing none, I'll close public comment period number one, and we will go to item eight, which is the bid opening for the Heart of Iowa Nature Trail, Conservation uh, Director Mike Cox, the Slater Connection. Good morning. 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 You know what, we need to pull that table back a little bit. I'll pull it up for another meeting. Okay. I was interested in using my cell phone that they were coming through to talk to the owl, to talk to the Zoom, to talk to the <laughs> Mike, good morning. Good morning, everyone. We do have four bids this morning. Okay. I will open them in the order in which they were received. The first one is from Absolute Concrete. Bid bond is complete. Bitter identity form is complete. Bitter status form is complete. And the bid amount is $169,569.50.
The next is from Howery Construction. Bid bond is attached. Bidder identity is attached, bidder status form is attached, and the amount is The next bid is from TK Concrete from Pella. Bid bond is attached. Bidder identity form and bidder status forms are attached. <laughs> Bid amount for TK Concrete, 1,000, excuse me, And the next bid is from Concrete Professionals from Altoona. And this is the last bid. Bid bond is attached. Bidder identity is attached, bidder status form is attached. And the bid amount is $165,107.80.
And that concludes the bids. We will review bids um, and then uh, come back with a recommendation for award. I um, am curious to see about the low bid. I mean, the difference between the low bid and the next lowest bid is $72,000, which is 73% of the lowest bid. And so I'll be interested to see what you come up with. I mean, even the estimate was $131,000. Right. Thank you. Right. Next, we'll go on to discussion and consideration of items brought before the board with requests for immediate action. Are there any? Seeing or hearing none, we'll go on to agency reports. There are none. Then to consideration of minutes, and we have a slew of minutes. August 4th, August 11th, August 14th, August 18th, August 25th, and August 26th. Are there any corrections to the minutes? Uh, not as they were finally presented. Okay. Thank you. That was for the quick change up on the draft. Okay. Any, anything? No. Okay, I'd entertain a motion for approval of the minutes. Um, I would so move for the 4th, the 11th, the 14th, the 18th, and the 25th. I was not at the meeting of the 26th. Okay, so the first five. Is there a second then? Second. Okay. Uh, Olson? Aye. Kedens? Aye. Merkin? Aye. And now the meeting, the 826, is there a motion to approve? I move approval of the 826 meeting minutes. And I second that motion. Kedens? Aye. Merkin? Aye. And they are approved. Next, consideration of personnel actions. There are none. And next is consideration of claims. Is there a motion to approve claims as presented? I so move. Second. Olson? Aye. Kedens? Aye. Merkin? Aye. Claims are approved. Next, we have consent agenda. And I'm going to pull two items just for discussion, item 7 and item 9. And were there others that we want to pull? Yes, I'd like to pull item 5 and item 15. Five and fifteen. Five and fifteen. I also need ten. I'm sorry. So I'm and, and you said what? I'm seven, nine, and ten. And five and fifteen. Okay. So I would entertain a motion for approval of consent except for those five items. So moved. Second. Ten. Aye. Olson? Aye. Merkin. Aye. Um I could go quickly and do the three that I have pulled. I think they're pretty, um, it's seven, nine, and 10, and the considerations of appointment uh, to the, seven is to the Board of Adjustment for an unexpired term for Laura Jondal. That term would be four months through December 31st, 2020. And similar for item 10 for Ben Jensen to Planning and Zoning Commission, because these are filling vacancies. The reason I wanted to pull those two is I just wanted to maybe get an agreement or understanding that because usually those are five year terms, that what we could do is just place the, um, the new terms on a later agenda without re-interviewing the applicants. Is that a problem? Because it would just be re-interviewing them in a couple months. I don't have a problem with it, given that we had a robust set of applicants. We clearly put out for you know the, the thirty plus the thirty days, okay, and that um, we I at least interviewed them with the understanding that they'd be serving the full term. And then so I looked at it too. I wasn't uh, thinking of it as five years and four months, uh, or only four months, and then doing it all over again. I was thinking in the totality. But everybody's doing an unexpired term. There's some that will not expire till 2022 or 23. So maybe we can decide then. But, but I, and the other thing I wanted to point out was under nine, Cheryl Moss, the application got um, um, attached 
twice his documentation, the appointment did not, but just for the record, um, Cheryl Moss's appointment, this would be for a new term because her term expires in December. So it would go through 1231 of 25. I just wanna make sure everybody knew that before we voted. So I would entertain a motion to approve items seven, nine, and 10. So moved. <laughs> And that's the understanding that yes, we will not be interviewed. Okay, Kevin. Aye. Olson. Aye. Merkin, aye. Those are approved. So now we'll go to item five. Supervisor Olson, you wanted to pull this one, so we yes. can start us off. Okay, so this is a consideration of request for proposal from the Sheriff's Office for a jail video visitation system design and installation. And I did have a couple of questions and I know that the sheriff in preparation sent uh, John Asmussen, the uh, jail administrator, plus some other staff here. Good morning, John. Good morning. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Um, so can you just like in three or four sentences kind of recap what this is? Okay, basically what it is, the video visitation. Um, there are services in the jail that um, usually vendors provide for the but they, they make actually some money off of it. So, so it's not gonna it's not gonna cost the taxpayers any money that they're gonna come in, they would actually put the equipment in, install it, and then there's with their long term, like say it's a five year contract is what they probably enter into. That's how they're gonna make back what their initial investment is on their equipment and they continue to make funds off of what they're doing. So the video visitation, if I use it as an inmate. I'd be charged a nominal fee for that to be able to do. So that's what they're gonna make. That's how they're gonna make their money. Okay. okay. So normally on things like that, a lot of times we'll just do the contract ourselves, but we put it out for our fee because we again want to make it open to multiple vendors, be open, be transparent, be open so that way it's everybody gets a chance if they want to come in and they want to actually try to fit it, they can. So my first question, thanks, because that's really good recap. Okay. My first question had to do with you kept on saying vendor and the contract talks about a consultant. Confusing, so or the RFP, the, you know, information. So it is more of a vendor. Correct. I recommend you just change the map. Okay. You know, to, to make it clear, because I read consultant and I went, wait a minute, I lost the consultant face here. Okay. My next um, comment question is you did a really good job of, no, of making it clear that this is no money to story time. I mean, it says that probably five different places, right? Mm -hmm. My, I'm still though um, confused or concerned that there might be some kind of uh, guarantee required from us. So I, you won't know until you see the RFPs, but that's my concern is that there'll be some kind of minimum requirement of income and also we would i guess we would also have when we get to the point where we're actually if we're going to sign anything ethan and would have a look at it too to make sure that that's not going to be as part of it as well to make sure that when any agreement that we didn't enter would have to come back before you for that so and then let's assume you know sometimes things happen we get into let's we go through and we get into an arrangement with a vendor and then we need to have a pull so I'm thinking I'd like to see in the RFP, not only you did a really good job also about installation costs and what they're gonna cost us. And that includes the extra things that, you know, we don't think about all the peripherals or whatever. So it was, it was really a great RFP. Maybe I'd like to see also in the event that they had to, uh, for some reason, pull out or you decided, we decided to switch that vendors or rebid or whatever, what the cost would be to get out of it. I can talk to Ethan and make sure that we can include that as well. Okay, all right. Uh, my final one is, do you have a guesstimate about the cost? I mean, have you talked to other jails or whatever about what should we expect to maybe anticipate or see? Did they say that? Um, there, there shouldn't be any upfront cost to us. There's a possibility of some revenue coming in. So I actually don't know if they give you a, a cost of what the equipment would be for the purchase of the installation, did they give you an idea? No. Okay. I think I was, my concern was the cost to the inmate or the family. And that was my Correct. Concern. And that's part of our the contract we negotiated. Like right now, we, we try to stay, we follow the FCC 
what they recommend to make for sure that you're not trying to gouge the inmates or anything like that with exorbitant fees or anything like that. So our phones right now run about 19 cents a minute. So it'd be along those lines, probably a little more again that you're dealing with video visitation here, but that's something that we would also negotiate as part of the contract to make sure it stays reasonable. I had experience with uh, Department of Corrections with telephone contracts, and there were a lot of concerns about those because they were very pricey. So I'm glad to hear that. And it's not going to preclude in-person visits at all. Correct. Okay. You still have we still have the ability to do that in person as well. Mm -hmm. It just it will free up a lot in that same bad weather. Somebody doesn't have to drive over to actually visit their family. They can actually do it from home. Or if I've got four people that I'm bringing over, instead of having to bring four people over, have to wait through, you know, four, four visits, I can have one visit with everybody. And I know these are unusual times, but normally, what percentage of the inmates that we house are actually out of county? Do you have any idea? Usually we don't have a lot out of county, so we try to keep everybody here. Yes. Okay. Is that, no, I'm, no, I mean, for our people here from other counties. Oh, okay. Um, there, with the student population, we do have, I'd say probably, oh, maybe 10, 15 percent of, you know, people that would be not from this area. Sure. And you also house for other counties. Correct. So that's where I think it really is a service that can be useful to the public. It's family members and friends rather than, you know, and it might be that, okay, that's a lot cheaper than putting gas in my car and driving here in time and all of that. So, so it's, it's something that helps you but it also can be seen as a service to inmates families correct definitely plus just availability you can do it throughout the whole week instead of having set days you have every day you can almost do visitation sure. and there are other jails in iowa that are utilizing something similar correct correct polk so county most most jails are going to this is it's the future so um Right now, you've got in-person visitation or just on the phone, right? Okay, great. So who monitors that? Is that a staff? Is that one of the DOs? Or? Correct. We have staff as well as volunteers to actually help with the actual visitation. Okay. Do you anticipate greater staffing needs or fewer staffing needs? Fewer. Okay. Because we shouldn't have to move the inmates around now that we actually be able to walk use the video visitation from their actual unit that they're housed in rather than have to actually move them to a different location throughout the jail. Okay. And then what about the monitoring part of it? Because it, you were quite it's, clear it, you wanted to be able to monitor, record, and... Correct. It's all, it's all recorded so we can go back and we can review, make sure if there's anything being done that's not supposed to be being done. So. Okay. Any other questions? I don't have any. Thank you for coming over here. Okay. We appreciate it. Thank um, you. I, Go ahead. I didn't mean to jump over. Sorry. Uh, yeah, I go ahead and move uh, that we uh, approve uh, putting out this RFP with uh, the changes suggested. Okay. Second. Any further discussion? Hearing none. Olson? Aye. Kevin? Aye. Merkin? Aye. Approved. Thank, Thank you very Thank you much. Thank you for wandering Thank over you. our deck. Yeah. Thank, Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> Thank you. We'll now go to item 15, consideration of contract for sanitizing polling locations. Did you uh, let the auditor's office know you're going to be pulling that? I didn't because I only have one question and I see Lucy Martin is on. And I just okay. wanted to know whether this month, this will be out of the existing budget as as, or as we budgeted, will we be, uh, need to allocate additional money for uh, this is Lucy. Um, this money actually qualifies for, we, we have some CARES money that is specific for the uh, 2020 federal election cycle. Um, and this qualifies as an expense under that. We do have to spend it and be reimbursed from the, from the state who is, the Secretary of State is, um, we apply to them and then they send us a reimbursement for that. So that's um, you might see this in future budgets. I think this might now become like sort of the cost of doing business um, in terms of since we are guests at all of our polling places. Uh, so, but for this for this cycle, it's um, it's a reimbursable item under the CARES Act. That's not the the CARES money the, that we have from the state. That's separate for, with the Secretary of State. 
Yeah, it, they're they're calling it Hava Cares Act, and it's very specific to the federal election cycle. Um, and actually, the deadline to apply for that is uh, Friday the 11th. So, which is um, why I'm hoping for approval today. That was Any my other? only question. Thanks, Lucy. Any other questions? No. Nope. Okay. Thank you. Then I would entertain a motion to approve the contract for sanitizing polling locations for the special elections and the general election at 250 per location. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none. Heavens. Aye. Olson. Aye. Merkin. Aye. It's approved. Thank you for putting us together. Next public hearing items. There are none. Additional items. We will go to discussion and consideration of reopening plan for the administration building. Joby, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. We've done a lot of work on this. We appreciate it. You're welcome. Summary and final thoughts. Final thoughts. But, <laughs> you know, situation in the county has changed a little since we worked on this document, so I think that's worth talking about. Since we are considering, you know, unlocking this building and some of the other ones. So, I mean, I think there's a workable plan that we all kind of work together on. I submitted it on the agenda today, but I mean, if we choose to unlock, if the three of you choose to unlock and the buildings, I think we got a plan in place that we can make it work. I don't know, I struggle with whether or not that's the right decision to do right now, but you know, that's, that's where we're at. And that's where we've been for the last few months. Well, you've done a great job, Joby, and even I know sometimes you had to feel tough questions and alternatives and had to take into account a lot of people's opinions. Yeah. Okay. Think, and yeah. desires and wishes, but you've done a great job. Thank um, you. So yeah, out of this whole thing, I only had one question that just had to do with signing up people to work at the front desk yeah. and win two or whatever. But so um, so you're saying that with the changing, the increase in the numbers, I'm going to yeah. yeah. guess a little bit where you were headed here. You're wondering about us opening up. Um, so from a facility standpoint, where would be your concern if we push this down the road? You know, right now, you know, we all seen the numbers, what they did over the weekend for, for Story County. You know, anytime you bring additional people in, you raise that risk of exposure and there's no real good way of a countermeasure on that as far as the sanitation aspect because outside of following every person around and literally sanitizing everything that they touch as they touch it there's no good way to provide a fully sanitized building at all times so but I also understand that we are the county government. There are services we need to offer to our citizens. So trying to find that balance is. So one of the things that occurred to me was when um, Supervisor Merkin passed on an email to us. Did she, did you get something double too, but from Rick Martinez, the city of Nevada about they were gonna open up today? Yeah, you haven't seen that? Or, Not okay. that I recommend. Yeah. I know. It, it, like, it, it, we should have 900 <laughs> emails today. Yeah. Um, so anyway, uh, Nevada's opening up. Okay. My thought then about just in managing, this, that's going to increase an expectation about people being able to access us. Yeah. People get us confused. Anyway, um, but uh, about us, you know, being open and therefore thinking about the people working down at the front, et cetera, about taking more hassle, more, more of a problem. And also, yeah, so that was one thing. And then there's really nothing you think you can humanly do more now at this point, right? I mean, to, to, to the, you've done all you can do for the staff to keep the staff safe. Yes, and I there, believe so. And therefore, the, the public, to the extent that we're interacting with the public on our base. Yes. That's my 
Um, I think my question is more, I think you have done a great plan here and I know um, a lot of work and I think I have some questions on the, the other buildings versus just the administrative building to say, um, I guess for my, kind of for my colleagues to consider who moved to open up is kind of having that plan in place in case we have to shut, shut it things down again. Um, because if the numbers continue to rise um, as they have been, um, there is sport season that's going on or starting um, that may increase the numbers even further. Um, I think we just need to have, a, if schools need to open up, then we have to have that plan, a well thought out plan of how are we going to not help that we are shutting down, uh, or at least the building. Still, the service is still provided, but closing the building up um, and so that people aren't getting confused as to what's going, what's going on. Um, we really need to take that into consideration. I agree. I, I liked, uh, let's let me back up. So when we received our tax bill, Ted, okay, I liked that it was right on the tax bill about that hours at the time of this printing were still closed and we could close again or however that was worded. So, um, so anything that we are spending out now that could put that on, whether it be a floodplain notice or, or whatever, um, I think would be good. Also, um, clearly about all of the releases saying that, you know, this is always something to change mm -hmm. due to, you know, the COVID situation. Um, and then the plan itself, I did most people indicate that they would be somewhat able to close very quickly. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they have, they all kind of gave the same answer. The more notice, the better, but we also understand that sometimes you don't have the ability to give a, a large notice because, you know, as the situation changes drastically, you know, but I think everybody, since we've been through it the first time, we all learned from that and, and, could, and could close and modify our operations quick enough to accommodate a short notice. Can I interject one, one point on that? Um, with a quick closing, the one thing we have to consider in our office is now um, we're gonna open up appointments if we open and people will have appointments for probably between five and 10 days out. Um, the end of the month is when property taxes are due. So if we do have to close the building, we're gonna have people who have already scheduled appointments that are then going to get their appointment canceled um, at the end of a month, which could cause some real heartache among citizens that wanna to try to get their transactions done before the end of a month where property taxes are due. So um, if it looks like we're going to close, I don't know what metrics we're going to use for closing the building. The more notice, the better for us because then we can shut off any future appointments, but it is going to be a, an issue we're going to have to face in our office because I'm pretty sure once we put appointments out there, they're going to fill up in a hurry. So that's... Sure. That's all I wanted to say about, I mean, our office is capable of closing down quickly, but I know that it will be a hardship on a lot of people who have scheduled appointments for a few days out. Pat can ask the question. You don't have appointments scheduled now. You haven't started scheduling nope. anything, correct? Okay. Nope. We will, we'll wait until the board decides on more of a concrete time frame, and then we'll let, um, we'll use the scheduling software and start making them available. Okay. I'm glad you brought up the issue of the metrics and what metrics or what we would use to decide to close because that does bring us back to the metrics that we decided to use a few months ago when we talked about how we would open. And we followed the Trump administration's guidance, as everybody will remember, and what that um, what that called for at that time was a 14 day downward or decline in new positives. We are nowhere near that. Um, we, as people have said, we have 
I mean, we're the Ames, which is two thirds of Story County residents is the number one hot spot right now, according to the New York Times and other sources. The Trump administration has just said Iowa should close more bars, should close more restaurants or reduce seating in restaurants. Um, I, and, and I just think this is the worst time to be considering reopening. I can't vote for it. Um, I know that we have needs for public to enter our buildings to do business. That biggest need is in the Justice Center right now. And that's because the, the courts have decided they have to start jury trials. They have to get those going. I have no problem with the sheriff saying then, you know, opening today because he's part of the justice system and he's intricately involved with that. The same with the county attorney's office. I see there's a real reason to have justice center open to the public. I honestly do not see what the huge need is to have our other buildings open to the public right now. Uh, we do different business. We have a lot of different services in the county. We also have different physical structures. And some of those physical structures make it easier, you know, to keep people in segregated in a, you know, a lobby that's just right off your main entrance. I think the Justice Center is set up well for that. I don't think our other buildings are. So I just need to say, I have some real concerns. We said at one point we needed to see declining numbers. Our numbers were small when we said that, but our numbers are very large now and they are going up. And um, We've got concerns with the metrics we're using anyway because the Iowa Department of Public Health seems to keep losing numbers or say, oh, we didn't count those. I guess we should count those now. Um, I think um, this is not a good time and I'm going to be voting no. And that's all I have to say about it. I uh, like to. Can I make one more comment? Yes. Um, the treasurer's office is pretty inundated with activity right now. Um, it is easier for us to do title work in person. It makes it go faster. However, um, we are into September now. And if we had a situation where our office had to shut down for two weeks because we had a few positive cases, it'd be pretty catastrophic for us. Um, I think yesterday we did about 600 or 700 property tax payments um that's two people pretty much working all day at it so if we were to get behind where we couldn't come into the office we'd have a real struggle getting caught back up with property tax and our motor vehicle work so um well i think our office would benefit from speed if we could reopen uh i know that it is a huge risk if we have to close down. Um, the mail would pile up in a hurry. We would not be able to cash a lot of checks. I know that that's an issue. People put a, a large amount on those property tax checks and if they're sitting out there for three weeks, it could be messing with their bank account. So um, this is a board decision and I'm gonna let you guys make it. I'm just letting you know our office right now is is definitely not a great time. <laughs> uh, our office has got struggles either way, I guess is what I'll say. It, 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 we could work through work faster if we were open, but if, if we we're open and we have an outbreak of some sort in our office, um, this would be the worst possible time of the year for that. So um, I guess that's the end of my commentary. I'll let you guys sort it out. Well, I remember the point that you made several months ago when we did close and you said then that if a hardware store has to close, there's another hardware store down the street. But if the Story County Treasurer's office has to close, there's, you know, there's nobody else here to process your motor vehicle registrations, your property taxes, whatever. And I, I when you said that, I thought, that makes a lot of sense, and I used that example when I had when I did, you know, field calls. Um, I don't know that we can keep people totally safe because our employees, like everybody else, goes to shop and does, you know, whatever. What we can only we can't eliminate risk, and I think Joey said that very well. What we can do is reduce risk when we see something that looks pretty risky and looks like a maybe a gamble not to take right. So I appreciate your comments, Ted, and I appreciate the hard work your staff have been doing all these months. I have a question for you, Mr. 
kind of related to if we stay closed and we're really talking about just not unlocking the front doors we're still talking about people bringing in for appointments by appointment only correct we're not going back to the very beginning it's just that we're not moving forward correct okay so Joey or yes. at all okay in the administration building right we will have another election coming up and we have mentioned this a couple times I know that the auditor wants us not to make decisions based on that, but at the same time, I'm back to how do we discuss about the time that she, uh, over the counter vote voting? I mean, how do we accommodate that? If we've got, if we keep, I mean, if the doors are completely locked. I'd have to have a, you know, Lucy, if you could weigh in, you know, her and I have not spoken specifically about the general election coming up in November. We just kind of, took it one election at a time. Granted, the one in November, in my opinion, is going to have a lot more turnout than the current yeah. election we have going on now. I mean, Gates Hall is on for the November 3rd election. I see Lucy unmuted herself. Yeah. I'm gonna let her speak. She did, and then she muted back up. Uh, yeah, this is Lucy, and that's a great question because we have been able to accommodate both the primary and the special elections we have on September 8th at uh, Darla's desk there in the front lobby and limit the building uh, exposure to the lobby area. That's just not physically possible with the size of the election. Um, and in-person voting begins October 5th. Now I could do in-person voting somewhere off site here but that is its own that that that's also complicated so i mean nothing is ideal about any of this um i do currently have the assessors conference room uh reserved for in-person voting um I looked at you know some of the stats we have. We could expect up to maybe 250 people a day choosing that option with all of the um, concerns about the postal system. Uh, that's also going to drive maybe more foot traffic than we would have expected. I don't know. I think we're going to be busy. We're going to be busy with the mail. We're going to be busy in person. We're going to be busy on election day. Um, yeah, it's, it's the board's decision. Um, whatever you decide, I will, I will react to that and, and set something up that works for Story County. But it's a, it's a, a lot of people per day starting October 5th, which is a little over a month away from now. Yeah, and I, I appreciate that information, Lucy, and also the information from Ted. Um, I do have concerns with the rising numbers uh, within our, our community, um, particularly since the White House has said, you know, we should be shutting down more. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> um, uh, that gives you a pause for concern. I hear exactly what Ted is saying, Lucy is saying, and Ted, your analogy that you said, uh, Lindy, you kind of said it or two, I've used that exact same analogy when people said, why aren't you open yet? And I give the kind of analogy of what happened in the treasurer's office and they're like, oh, I never I never thought about that. You know, how do you do that? At the same time, we do have other things that we have to consider uh, and hear. Um, if we would move to opening at least the admin building, so what I'm focusing on right now versus the other building, because I know we at one time talked about opening them all up at the same time, but that's that's not going to be right. That's how it is. So that's that's yeah, the first one. The <laughs> that if we would look at opening the building, I would say that I would want to look more towards the latter part of September to do that. Um, that would give just a little bit more time. Give some notice out there. Would give more time to get whatever set up that you know, thinking of the general election that, that Joby and maybe Lucy need to flesh out a little bit more for the building here. Um, but then also have, you know, maybe a week's time before you have that in-person voting so that everything else is all in place. I mean, that is just something I would throw for consideration. I heard Lucy saying we should just look at off 
um, uh, property or a account uh, location. I just have to wonder. I mean, she would have the connections, but um, uh, you're still going to run up against and have to have your staff in there and other uh, materials in place to help mitigate as much as you can versus here you may be able to have a little control i have a I, I, don't know. I have a lot of respect for the auditor's office especially when it comes to a presidential election cycle having many years ago followed them around for a day as a journalist but also having watched just for the the gubernatorial one with here in the in the building or whatever i mean this is a major undertaking a huge undertaking and then for them to have to move off site for part of this. I mean, I just watched what happens as they set up a satellite location and you're seeing people in, you know, running around with equipment or whatever. So uh, I understand very much that if they could keep it here or in the building in some fashion, that that works well. Um, I'm not opposed, by the way, to be putting this off. Uh, it's amazing what one week's worth of ri rapidly rising statistics can do to a position. Okay, so I want to let you know about that, all right? I'm not opposed anymore to putting this off. And yes, we're, we're not going to all meet the same day now. We just know that uh, and that happening. So um, uh, if we looked at reevaluating this, let's say um, uh, as we head into the, I guess, the third week of September, the third meeting of September, which would then, if we were looking then pushing it out a week before open, possibly, and then that still gives a week before what Lisa was saying, October 5, you know, where, when Lucy's got to open up, that would give us a better idea about where we are in the county. So, yeah, I, I, I'm on board with you guys. So Not so more than a week ago. Three, three more weeks. weeks, the 22nd of September. Yeah, that would be four more weeks. Four more weeks. Yeah, yeah. four more. I think yeah, I'm on board with the schedule of September. You know, just headed to the close to the end of September. They're yeah, they're what five Tuesdays in. Oh, okay. Yeah, this is the first September. So three got weeks it. is the twenty second. Okay. So, so yeah, I okay. yeah, those numbers are just like whoa, and we didn't have those when a week ago we were just sitting here and just guessing. Right. Is the county attorney on? Fine. See the county attorney. What I was thinking, the reason I brought that up is when we talked in another meeting um, that, well, the sheriff said he's opening today. Right. The county attorney said he could open any time and I think was ready to open. And I think it's because, you know, the, there's already people in that building and they've got a locked door, you know, mm -hmm. and a, a lobby area. I'm wondering if we would not want to change our homepage and just where it says that it says the sheriff's office is closed only the courts are open maybe we would want to change our homepage on our website to reflect that the justice center is open and just leave it at that and i don't know that we need a motion to do that i think that's the direction that's going there is that okay with everybody yeah yeah well i guess we're we're kind of combining Two or the two, we have one just the admin building and the other building. To me, yes, with the sheriff's office opening, mm -hmm. that building could be open. It sounded like from our conversation before that the engineer's building could be open or whatever. They don't get a lot of just drop in foot traffic, I guess. I, but yeah, but then we'd be consistent if we left that front door short, uh, shut, or you know, locked. yeah, because I didn't yeah. know whatever I wanted. It matters too much to them, but I think yeah, the justice okay. center is the one that gets yeah. foot traffic, right. is getting the customers now, yeah. criminal justice and customers. Well, I'm just saying if you're going to put something on the web page, you're going to want to put on the web page, okay, the justice center is open, you can put the engineers open, or not necessarily need to do that. Um, I don't think we need to. No, I mean, the control stays closed for now, right? Conservation. Uh, conservation is closed for right now. I think the other question then becomes the human services center. And yeah. yeah. Do we want to move to the, because these are two the, separate the, yeah. agendas. Yeah, yeah that's why we're two separate agendas, but we're, we're there, culminating the conversation in yeah. together. Okay, is there consensus on the first agenda item that we will revisit the opening of the admin building that issue on the 22nd? 
and then we can, if there is, yeah. make a motion that we revisit the opening of the admin meeting on September 25th. Yeah. Okay, discussion? I guess my only question is that is, we still say no, is that still, in the meantime, will Joby and Lucy, are, Lucy's going to need to know to that in-person voting enough enough time if she can have an off-site in-person voting location or an insight. So the on-site, excuse me, not insight here. I'm just wondering if that, well, I think that discussion still enough time. You know, I'm not saying that you, I, I just want to make sure. That well, we, I think they need to start talking now. Yeah. So. I agree. <laughs> yeah. and, 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 and have some kind of a, just let us know yeah. what the what the direction is on that. When we talk about this on the agenda earlier, sure. if you want to have Right. Well, the discussion on it. We we have to do the election. I mean, we have to have the in-person voting. That's the one thing we know we have to do. Right. And we've already done it. We did it for the primary in June. We did it in, you know, we're doing it now. The only thing is this is going to be a larger volume. Yep. So I honestly think that we whatever we can know about what the auditor's office is going to need as resources might inform our decision on whether or not we're opening. So would that be a conversation for the CCMT team to with on Wednesday, on Wednesdays as updates headed into a recommendation from the CCMT team headed on the 22nd? Sure. I mean, yeah. you know, that's what I'm thinking is, it's not that we won't have any information, mm -hmm. but at that point it will be working out of logistics, mm -hmm. which we're trying to, which one is one thing the CCMT team is doing, and then the recommendation comes forward saying, here's what we want to recommend as of September 22nd. We could even push it back to and have a special meeting on the 25th, right? Would that be the Friday? I think let's shoot for the 27th. Okay. Lucy, any final thoughts on that? Uh, no, that's fine. I, I'll talk to Joby and work out a couple of different options. Uh, that's acceptable. Thank you very much. Thanks, Lucy. So then, we're done with the... Okay, yes, so the motion. Motion. okay. any further discussion? If not, Olson, Olson. Aye. Ted, aye. Merkin, aye. We'll go on now formally to number two, which is reopening other county buildings. And I've made the suggestion that we consider the Justice Center open. Yes. Um, and we kind of started talking about others. I personally, the engineers, obviously there's so little, you know. Yeah, I can read you exactly. I don't, I don't know if Darren's on I don't know that. if he needed to have a separate thing or not, but he's, it is separated out on yes. here. Yeah, yeah, that's where yes. my thinking is coming yes. from. Yeah, I mean, I can read you exactly what Darren, his feedback about the engineer's building. It says, we really have no input on the reopening. We are good with whatever is decided. It has little impact on us as we have been getting the public business done even with the office closed. We meet most people out in the field anyway. Thanks, Darren. Go ahead. My sense is just to leave it the way it is for yeah. now. That's okay. Human services is, oh, somebody's got a hand up. There's in the chat, just so you guys are aware of it. Mm -hmm. Oh, Julie, just that we are open to the public of the county attorney's okay. office. Okay, well, well, yes. Yeah. Okay, county yeah. attorney's office is open. That takes care of that question. Thank you, Julie. Okay, so, um, animal control is just like staying closed. Yeah. Due to were, staffing. Yeah, right. 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 Yeah. Staff level issues. You know. They were never open 40 hours a week anyway. No. They, had they had reduced that. hours each week beforehand. So, no. and, you know, they're getting everything done. So, so uh, the one thing I would ask Sandra just to confirm is just Sandra confirming if somebody sees an animal they want to come meet, they're still doing that by appointment, correct? They still do all that. By yep. Okay, super. Then we're, yeah. Yep. They said animals in full consideration. Stay, stay currently, stay right. close. Yeah. Stay close where they currently are. Stay locked. Stay, stay locked. Stay, stay locked. Stay, stay locked. Stay, 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 stay locked. Stay locked. Yes. Stay locked. Right. Yeah. 
conservation, it looks like they're having their discussion on the 14th. So really comes back to human services yeah. building. And to me, as you can get in there, sounds like the, you know, the county attorney's office was literally the only office that if the front door's unlocked, they were the only ones that were going to unlock their lobby door. So that building is every other office, DHS, the community services, at least in the very beginning, they were going to keep their main lobby doors locked. And I see that Pauline Rudder yeah, is on the call. I invited her so she could okay. provide updated input if need be. So to me, if 90% of the building lobbies are going to juvenile court services is going to have theirs locked, we're going to remain locked. Why unlock the front door? So I want to, I see Carla's up there too, but yep. either Pauline and Carla or Carla. Okay. The issue though was a little bit about are we missing people who are walking, who need services who for some reason feel they need to walk in. Mm -hmm. Don't, you know, uh, do we need to get them to that lobby phone? Right? That you talked about putting up a list of the phone numbers to mm -hmm. call if you need immediate help. Yeah. So Carla and Pauline, Aaron, I see us too. Could you please weigh in on what you think the value is of having the front door unlocked so they can get to that phone? This is Carla. I mean, that, that does provide another option for folks to get in touch with the offices in this building. Um, you know, I, I believe the front door is seeing quite a few people. Um, just different staff have commented to me that the front door is pretty busy with people dropping things off or coming up to it. So uh, um, it just provides another avenue for them to be able to come in and call because we are we would like to go to an appointment only process, um, especially with our lobby doors being locked um, within our office. So it, it just provides another avenue for folks to get in touch. Now, the thing is they have to go in to that main, all the way, you know, you come in the front door is there and it's the phone's right out on the other side of, it's not in the sure. lawyer portion part where you could maybe dial in and make an appointment for these things. That, is it possible to unlock the outer doors but not the inner doors of the atrium? We'd have to add locking provisions on the inner set of doors. Oh, uh, they're not locked. Okay. We'd have to run a line for that phone. And yeah, and then we'd have to phone. relocate the phone. Relocating the phone would be the easy part. That might be something for continued conversation. Uh, you know, you hope this is the last pandemic that we're dealing with in the last situation, but we don't know. And there may be other circumstances where we really need to have phones in that kind of foyer area and those other set of doors that are have the capability of locking. That Pauline, did you want to say something? If so, you need to unmute yourself. Uh, sorry, I just wanted to just add uh, that we would prefer the lobby uh, not be um, opened up to the public. Um, part of it is. Um, we deal, we have to go into the lobby to use the bathroom and different things like that. And we deal with a homeless population that tends to um, um, like to stay in there. So that's a concern and that scares the girls um, that are in the office. The other part is um, we're concerned that if people know that the lobby is open, that they'll come in and they won't social distance and they'll be knocking on our door and wanting us um, to provide them service uh, in person. That's a concern for us. I will say though that um, we've not had a lot of, um, we've, well, first of all, we had no complaints about how we have things set up now with the, um, um, the boxes outside that have provide the applications and the drop box where people can drop um, items off to us. We uh, don't have staff in the office other than um, a support person who mans the phone and, um, and greets the courier and different things when things are delivered. Um, and does printing and stuff in the office and maybe a supervisor and workers stop in on occasion to print things. But even if people came to our office, we would have no staff there to assist them um, with questions about income maintenance or applications like food assistance or Medicaid. And our social workers are all by appointment only at this point. So uh, we, we would just advocate to keep it appointment only and continue to um, have the building not open to the public. So do you have the majority of your staff working from home then? And how long is 
do you have an idea sense for how long the state's going to have you working off predominantly off site? So yes, the majority of our staff are working from home. Our income maintenance workers who are the workers that sit at a desk and determine eligibility for food assistance, 